So, how are you feeling about this Women's World Conference that's coming up? You know, I'm feeling really excited. I feel like the conversations that we had during the meeting are really allowing us to start to explore some of the issues in more depth and to really think critically about um, what do we want the media to achieve, whose voices is it important to hear, how do we open those spaces, what does inclusion really mean, some of those really important questions. So I feel like we're, we're moving toward that. Mm -hmm. And not only addressing those questions, but addressing those questions in a global con in a global context where what we have going on now, for example, the, well, the, what is hopefully the collapse of capitalism and the leadership that is emerging in in that open space, how we want to develop female leadership and promote it. Because what I see around me, especially among people my age, is a complete lack of knowledge about the work, the incredible work that women are doing on a global level. It's not in the media. We don't see it promoted. It's sort of marginalized and, and pushed aside in terms of the conversations we have around global development. And so to see a gathering where that is on the main stage and we have these powerful women leaders talking about the current issues that we're facing. I think that there is huge potential there for people to see how powerful we can be, but also to gather and talk about these issues in a way that is different from gatherings of the past, in a way that sort of breaks a patriarchal model where we can gather and be political, but in a way that creates community and creates inclusivity instead of excluding marginalized groups, giving them the space and a platform to speak out about the issues that they are acting on and the fantastic work they are doing. That's what I'm really excited to see. I'm also really excited about um, the discussion that's happening around um, young women's leadership and emerging leaders and um, passing the torch or shared power or how do we think critically about feminisms and women's movements and how do we talk about space for young women's leadership and the incredible energy and enthusiasm that's happening and the third or the fourth wave, whatever language we're using, but how are we moving forward in this way and really facilitating intergenerational and shared leadership? Right, and, and it, how new generations can sort of pick up where people from the past have left off, but without the baggage. We, yes. we can learn from the mistakes of the feminist movement in the past, but we're not overshadowed by it. We're not owned by that. We don't have that baggage in the same way. Our idealism stays strong, and we can learn from the mistakes that others have made and build on their successes, which is really exciting. And I think that what I'm hearing among younger generations, which is something I really, really hope will be represented at the gathering, is just this need for inclusivity, this need for a plurality of definitions of feminism, and a way to move forward that incorporates many different voices, many different ways of approaching political problems. Mm -hmm. And non-binary um, and non-traditional ways of thinking about inclusivity. Yes. So, you know, how do we include um, women of faith and sex workers and HIV positive women in the same room and have everyone feel valued and included? So some of those more kind of complex conceptualizations and, and how to move forward. Mm -hmm. And opening up conversations about why those people aren't feeling included and how that fragment fragments our movement, right? Because without those conversations taking place, we can't figure out ways to come together and work collaboratively because the most amazing potential in this gathering is for thousands of women to come together in the same place and figure out how we can work together on these common struggles to overcome things like the economic crisis, to figure out how to maintain environmentally sustainable practices, to figure out how to fund our future endeavors, and how to create solutions to enormous problems like violence against women that women all over the world are experiencing, but we we are going to have this opportunity to come together and share strategies, to share examples of policies or solutions that have really worked to change the way things are happening on a global scale. And the, in, and the intersectionalities are connections between those concepts as well. So, you know, how does um, violence against women and HIV AIDS, how do those two issues impact on one another? How does it increase vulnerabilities? Where are the strengths? Where are the movements that are finding solutions? Um, and how do we celebrate what we're doing well and, and address the gaps. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good note. I'm going to stop it. Okay.